Hello, thank you for watching What Would She Do? I'm your host, Saran Almond, and today is National Missing Children's Day. On today's show, I'd like to share with you some pertinent information and the unfortunate event that a child you know or love goes missing. So what do you need to know? Let's start with what is an Amber Alert? America's Missing Broadcast Emergency Response was named after Amber Renee Hagerman, a nine-year-old girl who was abducted, raped, and murdered in Arlington, Texas in 1996. Amber Alerts are emergency messages issued when a law enforcement agency determines that a child has been abducted and is in imminent danger. Amber Alerts instantly galvanize communities to assist in the search for and safe recovery of an abducted child. The alerts are broadcast through radio, TV, road signs, cell phones, and other data-enabled devices. Since Amber Renee Hagerman's tragic murder, and as of May 2020, approximately 988 children have been recovered specifically due to Amber Alerts. On February 22nd, 2020, Chai Liam Cody Brown Erickson went missing. At 6.52 a.m., the following Amber Alert was issued by the Matthews, North Carolina Police Department. Hours later, baby Chai Liam Cody Brown Erickson was found dead in a Charlotte cemetery. Issuing an Amber Alert for a six-month-old black baby boy is so nonspecific that it applies to every six month old black baby boy. So I was so bothered by this Amber Alert because when it came through, I thought it was so vague, there would be no way to identify this baby if in fact you did encounter this child. And the Matthews, North Carolina Police Department failed to meet the criteria as required by the Department of Justice, where you have to provide descriptive information to help with the safe recovery of the child. And in this case, it did not happen. And it's not solely because of the vagueness of the Amber Alert, but I did contact the police department. And at the time they were not able to provide any information because it was an ongoing investigation. However, the person that answered the phone did leave me with this. Perhaps that's all the information that they included because that's all the information they had. So doing something to get results is very different than when you do something just to say that you did it. So hence the reason for this show. I want to equip all of you with the information and the resources that if this becomes your tragic reality that your child goes missing. You have the information and the knowledge to help with um, uh, uh, galvanize the community to search and identify your child. Okay, for starters, I like to debunk some myths. Myth one, I have to wait 24 hours before I can contact the police. Absolutely not true. You can contact the police immediately. As soon as you realize that someone is, in, is missing or in danger, you can contact the authorities immediately. Myth two, that you have to be a family member or a relative. You do not have to be related to anybody to report them missing. If you come to the realization that someone is missing, their routine is off, they may be in danger, you can contact the authorities immediately, okay? Myth 
Three is that you have to go to the station to make a report. You do not have to go to a precinct. You do not have to go to a police station to report someone missing. You can make a phone call to report someone missing. In my area, you make a phone call and the police follow up and do the report in person by coming to your location. Um, and that may be vary depending on what city and state you live in. On December 31st, 2018, President Trump signed the Ashanti Alert Act into law. The Ashanti Alert Act creates a nationwide alert system for missing and endangered adults between the ages of 18 and 64 years old. Ashanti Billy disappeared from the Hampton Roads, Virginia area in September 2017. Her body was found two weeks later in Charlotte, North Carolina. At 19 years old, Billy was too old for an amber alert and too young for a silver alert, the system to help locate seniors who are missing. The Shanti Billy alert was signed into law, but has not yet been implemented. So what can you do to help? Well, in addition to volunteering with organizations who are dedicated to finding our missing, you can also disseminate information about missing persons. I had an opportunity to speak with the founder of Find Our Missing POC, Miss Ebony Gray. She has created an Instagram profile dedicated to disseminating information about our missing people of color who are so underrepresented by the media when reporting cases of missing persons. So I'd like to share with you some of what Ebony shared with me. Take a look. Missing people of color go missing every single day. And it's not being reported the same way Caucasian people are being um, going missing. So we have to be very protective of our children. Don't give them this idea that the bad man looks like the boogeyman. Be realistic with these children, because they need to know the truth. The truth will help them. Monitor the social media. Um, know who their friends are, first and last name. Know who their parents are. That's very important. And also, be careful who you have around your children. A lot of these missing people, missing person cases, are um, at the hands of a mother's boyfriend, or a mother's husband, or a family member. If you see something that look, doesn't look right, say something. And if someone goes missing, we don't have to wait. If someone goes missing here in Charlotte and the family is starting a um, search party, I'm going to be a part of that. Don't let it get cold. Continue to talk about it. Continue to press the police department to do their due diligence. You have to go out there old school way, put up posters social media, post it as much as you can, and just continue to talk about it. All we can do is hope that something, some type of lead, um, will lead you to either that person being found safe or, um, unfortunately, lead you to their remains so you can bring them home and give them a proper burial. Even though I post daily, I, I'm just a regular working mother. <laughs> And I can't post every single person who goes missing. Sometimes half of the people that I would like to post, they don't have a picture. They don't have any information about the person. Um, they may just have their first name. I don't know how old they are. You know, even if they're really still missing, I don't have that information. So it's very challenging, you know, not having uh, enough information. This is what I do every day. I research missing person cases, get as much information out as I can, and I share it with my followers, and my followers share it with their followers. We want to help find these people. We have to put 
our children first. That's most importantly. Um, we have to be more of a community. If you see something, say something. I would rather you be wrong and say something than not say something and be right. For more information on Ebony Gray, for more information on how you can help missing children, for more information on how you can protect your children and resources available to you if you are in fact a family member or a friend of someone who has gone missing, please visit my website at www.whatwouldshedotheshow.com. I thank you so much for watching today. In addition to it being National Missing Children's Day, it's also Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day to you all and prayers to all who are gone but never forgotten. Thanks again for watching. I'm your host, Saran Almond, and this is Missing on What Would She Do?